Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of uh, Doki Doki and uh, I didn't get spoiled or anything but um, I saw a slight note in like a Steam review because I was curious about what people were reviewing and I didn't see any spoilers or anything but the re all the review read was, said was the game files are important and that was all it said. So got the game files here, got them all here, um, just the usual stuff I guess, but I guess I'll keep them up in case I need them. Bit of a weird thing to say, but I'll go with it. And we're back, alrighty, I don't know why the music stopped, is there a reason there's a music stopped? Or is it because I just haven't clicked yet? Okay, everyone. Oh, uh. Ah. Uh, uh. Okay, there he goes back. Yuri jolts back. Time to share poems. Mike, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, we just finished the whole chocolate thing, didn't we? Yeah, that's what happened. Okay, thanks. The spell, the spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the pack of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up with, without so much as a word between us. Yeah, it was kind of awkward in the end, really. I get the feeling that there's something, that there's something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. I have to go through everyone with the poems again. Oh boy. Um, I don't know. I'll just do it in order, I guess. See from top to bottom. Dot, dot, dot. Ooh! I like this one, Mike. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does this mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. Hey, <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. It makes me feel bet If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying a feeling is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't know what kind of uh, writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why didn't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, if you, don't you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll keep, probably keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like hope happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah, that's a way of putting it. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you like I can't see you liking something sad, sorry. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud, then you have when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a ha ha nice happy rainbow. That's a cute way of putting it. Sorry, that's an un that's unexpectedly polite. I agree. Eh, it is. Maybe I'm getting a bit better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Mike. I should go back go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. It's longer than the last one. I put in the bottle to keep it safe. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to make a friend eat the bottle start and make amends. But something my friend thinks so I down come the bottles the other day. I have to have a dream. I have to friend after friend. More bottles. Deeper my fingers go. Expert and ducky. So the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off the bottle caps. It doesn't feel like the time's last. My empty shelf. I use more friends of the front door. Finally, all done. I open up. And then come my friends in. Come in touch. I already do. The, they want bottles that much. I frantically put them from the shelf one after another, holding them with each other in each and every bottle. But, but every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I do is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay, that sound that started kind of cute, but then at the end it kind of got a bit. The the, the mood of it kind of changed. It's like, like she said, bittersweet. It's like happy and sad. 
Holy crap. Sir, did you really write this? Of course I did. Did I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to, being used, to being used to being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing's like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Aha, don't get ahead of yourself. Siri's always had a getting obsessed with something before drop. Siri's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Yeah, I, I know what that's like. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, next in the list is Natsuki. She's probably gonna like it, because she didn't like the last one. Hmm. I liked your last one better. Really? Eh? Really? <laughs> well, yeah, I can tell you were a little more daring with this one. But you're really not good enough for that yet. I, it fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by using annoying, complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. So basically, you don't like how Yuri does her poems. Got it. Yuri's head over heels full of cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! Making you read look so hard is full of deep meaning. It's just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion. True. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. No, that's just being biased. You, you just said everyone's opinion matters and then you'd say nine's best. It's not how it works, Natsuki. Sorry. Uh, anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll learn something. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wicky, icky, icky wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite song. song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would prowl to the rhythm of the words. She likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Uh, one time I heard my leg really bad, and Amy helped me out. I got to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders, but her friends talk to like spiders too. That's not why I'm friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm going to tell everyone. So, you don't like somebody, and you don't want to be associated with someone because of a particular thing. Isn't that kind of associated to what you were just talking about, like, Yuri's writing style being different? Anyway. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was too sh way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, 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 of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in the poem. I die have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with such simple analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of the poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like this? Of course, it's about how it's about how everything everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. You are about to say something. It would be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. That's true. Something that you're afraid of people find out they make fun of or think less of you. That's true. But that just makes people stupid. Not really. Whoever cares, who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and makes them happy? That is true. That's true. As long as they're making them happy and they're not hurting anyone with it, then it's fine. Everyone likes has, likes their own thing, and there you go. There you go. Life lessons from Doki Doki. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like the second, I don't know, life lessons and real messages are coming out here randomly. I think people really need to learn to respect others for, for liking weird things. It'd be nice. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of people, other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. I want to make people think, think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, Yuri, I guess. I'm just going in order. Let's see what you've written for today. Dot, dot, dot. Dot 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 dot. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it, Mike? This one might even be might even be better than yesterday's. 
How did you even pick up the flick on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job, did a good job explaining. I really want to try giving it more imagery. Your visibly swallows. Ever, even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know what Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds like it probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone moved by my by my writing, it just makes me really happy. That's an understandable feeling. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really unwrite for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Dot dot dot. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem with Yuri today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. I feel like the me going for directly her has been has been benefiting like her being more lenient towards me, like sharing more stuff. Hey, the raccoon. It uh, happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty, sna guilty snack. My attention was caught by a scutting a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. Okay. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious is well aware of the consequences. Well, aware that the raccoon is, is fed well, fed will always come back for more. The intense view of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon. And... I can't tell what that one says. The moon increments its phase and it reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the fresh and soft that the raccoon becomes excited. At first I'm merely ejecting my emotions to this newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken the following to me. You could say that it's got to quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry none and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic pavilion. Pavlovian conditioning? I slice the bread and I feed myself again. There was a lot of emphasis on the knife there. I, I mean, that could just be like imagery and like, it could just be like, you know, like she likes using complicated words and stuff, so I don't know. It's just the two main focuses were like the moon, the night, well, three, moon, knife, and raccoon. It's a bit of an odd three to put together, but hey. <clears throat> um, it was a little more daring with, with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. Yeah, it is. I don't know if I don't know if it's my fault, but I can can can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if it takes it as face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in any more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. That's what Natsuki was talking about with the unusual hobbies and stuff. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it didn't matter when, what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's right. I, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make f who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, please don't tell her I said that. Ah, <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, so I would probably hate myself. I, I, I embraced my weirdness a long time ago, love. So no worries. I might be ranting a little bit now. No worries. But I'm glad that you're a real good listener. Yeah, I, I could listen for ages. You're good, at lo you're good at a lot of things. Thank you. Writing, listening, not so much. They, they're listening, yeah, writing, no, I don't know. There really are many people like you, Mike. Eh, I don't know. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would be so, feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I would look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you, you ought to thank for that. It, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. 
For just a moment, her timidity seemed to disappear. Okay, I'm definitely benefiting her then. I'm slowly helping her get more open about herself and stuff, which is good. Which is good. Okay, only Monica left. Hi again, Mike. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's, it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll become with a masterpiece. Aha, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Give my phone to Monica. Hmm. Alright. That one's good. Oh, this one's good. If, if it feels like you're not only, not, not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just, just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Well, kinda, yeah. I've been doing similar to her. On purpose, so she'd be nicer to me. <laughs> hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what's going in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. It's mean that I wish she didn't know keep so much to herself. But still defending her like, like that. You must be pretty into her. Eh? Uh -huh. You completely misunderstood. Ahaha, <laughs> calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. He tried to trick me into saying something then. Monica kind of whispered that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was, I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colours, they want to stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, and endless suck off any of meaningless noise. The vo noise, it, noise it won't stop. Viol violent, grating waveforms. Swicking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalk board on turntable, like playing a vinyl on pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. It's a lot of empty space. Load me. Load me? What do you mean, load me? Is something happening in the files? No, wait, let me check. No, everything's the same. Load me? I don't know. Hmm, it's even much better than your last one, huh? Ahaha. <laughs> it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I'd never really seen before, I guess. I'm getting like playing with my space on the paper. I noticed there's like a big gap and it says load me at the bottom. I don't like what the other's about. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of her. That's true, but what's with the load me? That's w making me wonder now. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the light lines really makes sure makes me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. There's probably like tons of secrets in this game I don't know about, so sorry if I don't get them all or whatever. Like that load me thing's probably something to do with something in particular. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're going to speak up, trying to speak over this noise. Like it could be as simple as just loading that thing I just did, but if so, then it's too late now because I didn't save. But oh well. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. Ahaha. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as an abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it in the way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, it, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Alright, let's, let's get it, Monica. What's your writing tip? Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When this happens, don't forget to save your game. Woman? Wom I'm saving my game right now. Uh, <laughs> woman? You told me to load me a minute ago, and now you're just telling me to, to save your game. Are you preparing me to tell me... Are you telling me there's going to be some important decisions in the future in the game that I'm going to have to save before? Is that what you're getting on about, woman? I get the feeling that's what you're going on about. You never know when you might be changing your mind. I get what you're driving at, lady. Or when something expected might happen. Yeah. Wait, is this TV, TV even about writing? No! What am I even talking about? The game! Ahaha. Uh -huh. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Why did you talk... Woman? Monica? There's something that's not right about you, woman. You were talking about the game saving system. Has anything changed in the files? I'm just, I'm just checking. 
No, nothing's changed in the files. Okay. Okay, everyone. Well done in each other's poems, right? Yeah, everyone's done. And you... You... You low-key broke the th fourth wall there. Well done, Rita. Yeah. I have something extra planned today, so if anyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? Is that way we can put some together any, anything good in just a few days? We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves and getting any, get any members, new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't, really do, I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're just going to keep it simple, okay? We won't, we won't need much more than a few decorations. Siri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets. We can, we can just give out during the event. Okay, that's not great. That's great and all. But doesn't that tell us what we're actually going to be doing? Or, but doesn't but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought I heard you about this already. Sorry, I got a bit gassy throat for some reason. We're going to be performing. Oh God, performing. Per. Um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So you're always putting on all the, po all the posters in case anyone wants to pay ahead of time. Eh <laughs> heh So here has been colouring a poster hold it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't start already already start putting these posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be forming in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no Sayori. I understand what they're, where they're coming from. Remember what Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until like just a couple of days ago? It's a lot to ask for them to recite the poems out loud and to a whole room full of people. True. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. Hmm. But I'm st I still think we should give it our best. We're the only, we're the ones who, we're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And then the more people we perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! Without expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's for those reasons that we're all in the club today. Don't you want to share with the... Don't, don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same things that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it'll take to stand in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <sighs> hmm. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Theory looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think Natsuki and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Hmm. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any argument le arguments left. Uh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Mmm. Yuri dejectedly de de glances around at everyone else's expecting faces. Ah. <sighs> I guess I really don't have a choice. Aha, <laughs> that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice rec rec reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. It'll, it'll start off... Yeah, it'll start off to help everyone feel a bit more uncomfortable. A little more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through the notebooks to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands, up, stands by the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Now Monica begins playing her poem. A clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows ev exactly how to apply emotion behind each line, she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes to Mon on Monica. Siri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a brief breath and smiles. That was good, Monica. Ahaha, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm just hoping to get a good example. Are you going... Are you going... Uh, are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Oh, yeah. Yuri's fired up, fired up all of a sudden. 
Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. Can do it, Yuri. It's called... Affer image of a crimson eye. Yuri's eye voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Yuri, suddenly she finishes. Suddenly she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into rally and glances around as if she'd been bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me, joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off so guard that she, but we were caught so off guard that we must have run. As we applaud Yuri, as we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sorry, he hops out of the chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ah ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. Eh <laughs> Sorry. It's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're saying to other people. Imagine you're saying it to yourself, like in front of a mirror in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sorry begins a poem. Sometime, somehow it feels like her soft voice was made, was made, was made, was made as a perfect match. The poem is aimlessly cheer, cheery like Sayuri is. Sorry if I'm still sucking at reading, by the way, guys. It's serene and bittersweet. Yeah, that bittersweet that you mentioned before. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it from Sayuri's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayuri meant when she said it, she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sari finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sari. <laughs> even Mike liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sari. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of de delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I'm, I've seen poems of yours that a sort of gentle delivery wouldn't, wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. I'm just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hey, The next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. You don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Mike. It's not like I can compare I can not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Mike lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki, it's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and, ste I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I just like my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, writing it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about that so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Yeah, probably. I think that's something I'll that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki burgeonly goes out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you looking at me? Cause you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts presenting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little un un unfused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's, na it's, na it's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The, f the words feel like they bounce up and down as, as it's giving life to the poem. And Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me go do that again. Ah, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can, put, I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... 
Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope they all have an idea. It might be hard, but I hope you, that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get everyone pra get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let, make, let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I, I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think it's about the time for. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to fight, write poems for tomorrow as well. Another one. It's been working out really nicely so far. Let's continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monica's the Mon well, Monica's the big day. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayuri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. I'm pressing Monica, and then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayuri? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a, it must be a little nice, though. Well, ah, how am I just to respond to that? It's okay, man, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I was, I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Hmm? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get, I like how we get to, I mean, sorry, fumbles with the words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asked me to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> uh, um, uh, save. You told me to save. Um, I don't know. I'll do a coin flip, hold on. Heads is Yuri, tails is Sayori. Alright, I get Yuri, I guess. Moving home with Yuri, huh? Why does that thought make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for socialize, I feel awful turning her down, so. Isn't she isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with it. That, that, that has nothing to do with what I just said. Haha, <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe, but i just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sorry, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, if you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. I feel bad now. <laughs> I really hope that me not like not talking to I there's no real mm, I don't know it just feels like she's getting sadder and sadder but it's kind of it's kind of a fault for trapping me with such a weird question I guess but at the same time ah, I don't know man I can't just lie to her ah, these these choices no wonder Monica gave me that fourth wall break save reminder. But if there's something that makes me happy, makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. And again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Well, I don't know, man. Uh, we're going for Yuri again, then Dark. Dark? Wow, okay. Um, capable? Yeah. Anxiety? Yeah. Uh, I just don't like that word in general, so... Hurt. It goes to you. Okay. Judgment. Uh, unquieted. Wow. Okay. Um... Covet. Yeah. Agonizing. Yeah. Broken. This is confusing me how I'm getting hurt sometimes with these. Um... Inferno. Frightening. Misfortune. That's weird. Uncontrollable. Extraordinary. I'm... Tenacious. 
empty. This is confusing me how these saddle woods going towards her now. It's a bit confusing to me, really. Uh, I don't even know which one I've got more of now. Oh, fuck. Um, uh, treasure. Ah, I think I've got more of her now, actually. Shit. Uh, hopeless. I always bet these words go towards her. Eternity. Okay. Pleasure? Okay. <laughs> I have no idea which I got more of now. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Ahaha. Uh -huh. You just have a lot you must have a lot of determination. Starting the club and now picking up piano? Well maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that remember that the club would wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Won't you complain about it just yesterday in Nasuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part, our part of the festival. But it's the whole day of school where it's the whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Fair enough point. I'm I'm down for that. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do do you, uh, Monica? Do they usually have fried squid? Probably not. Nothing that exotic at a school thing. Squid. That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying that you don't like squid? You of all people? Yeah, I don't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Hmm? Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own rent for now, okay? Eh <laughs> heh Okay, Natsuki, you've, like, switched personalities with Sayori at this point, like, seriously. Like, Monica picked that up at the start, and so did I. You're acting like Sayori. So is Sayori gonna be acting more like you now? I'll know when she comes in. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as your- Your reactions aren't as fun as yours or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's so sitting at- sitting at the desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I have my hands in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah. Eh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everyone- is everything alright? Of course! Well, why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. It's fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I would I worried worriedly glance at Sari but thought to act towards everyone else. I have a feeling Sari's going down a bad way right now. Like after yesterday, it feels like she's going a bad way. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. May I should go ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sari recently? Since they've been practicing preparing for the festival, they might not be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who was shuffling through some papers at their desk. Mike, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed like, anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber razor up and down the d her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not what. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Mike. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she never really likes it. She's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you know anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seems like she wants to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on mine is you, Mike. Oh god, don't don't tell me because I turned it. Don't tell me because I said I'd go home with Yuri. I fucked something up. I'm finding that might be one that on your mic. You, Mike. Me? How on earth will you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but. Sarah talks about you more than anything else, you know. Eh. She's making she's been so much happier ever since she joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned off. Like extra light was turned on inside of her. What? 
No way. Sarah is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Mike. Have you thought that maybe you you've always seen her as, as cheerful? Because that's just how she went, how she is when she's around you. I don't know. Maybe. Um. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I do anyway? What do I do? What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about it. I said. I tried to talk to her, so try not to think about it just for now. Ah. All right. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she just said to forgot about it, but I only know what know that I won't be able to talk, get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from my desk and walks across the room to where Sarah is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sarah and get to talk to her. But she keeps she's giving her voice quite, so quiet I can't hear hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sarah told me not to worry about her and I'd have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's something I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me for over a book. But she looks away just quickly with, with a flustered look on her face. I realise that she won't get anywhere. I realise that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I had, no, I had no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand, up, I stand up from my desk and sitting, sit in one next to her own. Dot dot dot. I don't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't do, even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you able to tell that I was thinking like thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it, was hot, it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. Sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are the only concern of those who willingly share in their concern. In that concern, of course, there are certainly those who find it the most comfort in keep, keeping them keeping to themselves. But if you prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just thinking a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. But when I asked her about it, she didn't even want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Eh, sorry. I didn't want you to say something stupid. It's not that. I, it's not that I just didn't want you, you to understand. Yeah, my English today. It's not that I did. Just didn't want you to misunderstand. So you and I have just been friends for a long time. That's all. Ah, I see. And perhaps it's unusual for her to be. Just, yeah. What? Okay, I'm gonna take a drink. Sorry if this sounds gross on the mic or anything like that. Ah, that hopefully will help. Now perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. See, that helped. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little bit too much. Mike, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep, deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you know, may know them. Ah, so you think there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, if I think that Sarah is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know or know what she wants. I noticed her strange behaviour today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looks like she was fully occupying her thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sorry. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess. We don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Dot dot dot. Yuri suddenly looks deep into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, persons with serious mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware, weren't aware in you. That is, I think that she wouldn't be a very she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri. You're giving me way too, you're giving me too much credit. I'm I'm a pretty simple guy, like I really am in real life. So I think it's pretty good as understanding my own feelings. I'm not really as sophisticated as you. Ah, that's not a compliment, is it? It it it, it is what it is. Anyway, as long as you're here, why don't you, we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. 
Should be, I should be taking my mind off the whole thing anyway. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Though I know it, everyone's back to normal. Everyone goes to retreat to their poems, and I do the same. I can make eye with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder if she's talking. About, I wonder what she was talking about with, with Sayuri. Who knows, man? Well, Sayuri's at the top of the list, so that's helpful. Dot dot dot. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about the one I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That all matters. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Mike. I think this is relating back to something they said about her putting herself before others a bit too much. Like, she's caring about me being happy more than she's being, uh, her being happy at this point, because she's clearly not completely happy with me being so close with Yuri in a way. I can kind of tell, so... Oh, damn. That decision really mattered, I think. So, damn it, Monica, you got me with that fourth wall. Sorry. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sorry? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sorry, Sorry cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming, humming to herself. Okay. Uh, is your personality still switched or rude, or is it back to normal again? Meh. I guess you really haven't learned anything after all. Honestly, I don't know why I got my hopes up in the first place. What? I didn't think this one was that bad. What did I do wrong? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. Oh, it's just this is just like the difference in styles again, isn't it? It's going to be just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this unless you're at Yuri's level. Next to Yukuki stops short all of a sudden. You don't tell me. Eh? You're not trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri, you would love this kind of this angsty. Just because she's talented writer doesn't mean I mean Ah Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though though that I didn't what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. You're done with me because I'm doing something that you don't like in the style you don't like. Well, sorry, Natsuki. Jeez. <sighs> Natsuki shivers a poem. So the poem I handed back, handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. That's what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I want a mind reader, I wasn't destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really a girl I was trying to impress in the first place. So my character just admitted I was in trying to impress someone else. Probably Yuri. Oh, okay, Yuri. God, what's gonna happen here? Dot dot dot. Mike, your writing has only proved in these last few days. Each poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. Okay. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little em envious even. I don't think it's even ever, ever yeah. I don't think it's ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. Really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got a chance to share my writing. I never thought it'd be like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at, good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. My during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Oh. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoyed reading. Yeah, I noticed. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But, books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know how 
would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who know always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And they don't make they hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you. I'm not a know-it-all, Mike. I'm the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. All I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understand what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Mike. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I really, I, I read too deeply into things. But every time, you always treat me just like anyone else. Well, yeah, I do it with everyone. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's when I, that's why, I, yeah, every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you as you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined the club hoping I'd make friends. I would say I have at least one success, wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri really puts her head in her hands. But this time she smiles as she does it. Do you want me to show me? Do you want me to show me your? Do you want me? Do, do you want to show me your poem? God damn me! Yeah, I do. Let me let me get it for you. Ghost in the Light Part 2, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing in the distance of a blue light, green light flickering. A, a lone figure crosses his path, a silhouette of a struggling in the eerie glow. My heart pounds, the silhouette glows closer, closer. Oh my umbrella casting a shadow to shield me from visibility, but I am too late. It steps in the street like a gas and drop my umbrella. The light flickers, my heart pounds. He raises his arm, time stops. The only indication of movement is this amber flight flickering against his outstretched arm. The lurking light is a rhythm with a pounding on my heart, teasing me for succumbing to his forbidden emotion. Have you, have you, even, have you heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up an understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand, the flickering stops. Ghosts are blue green. My heart is amber. Okay. Yeah, a lot of symbolism and stuff, which I'm not 100% on that one. Finishing the poem, I start. To, I hand it back to Yuri. When instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Dot dot dot. Do you dislike it? Ah, n no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this was. What, what, what this was one. What this one was about. Jeez. Although this clearly isn't the poem that Nasuki said she wrote about. Meaning, I'm probably the one she's showing this to. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I, I understand this one. Dot dot dot. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to take eye contact, I, I see a faint smile emerge in Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response, I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can... Um, the poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles as if she didn't want me to notice. You always, you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return the favor, some, favor sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put my poem away. Alright, just Monica left. Uh, hi Mike. Have you, have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, in the club is the one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ahaha. Anyway, let's, get, let's like, take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Dot dot dot. Your style's got so refined, Mike. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. 
Yeah, I've been, wa I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say m more words than the past couple of days that she's talked she's talking in the whole year. I'm not sure how you did it, but she's but that's pretty impressive. Well, she didn't. She just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're clearly putting in a lot of effort. You just really like her. Yeah, that's. Ah ha ha. It's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending, spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading the edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she's had a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all the time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright. I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, well, if so, something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it'd be, it could be terribly hard for her. Her books are a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. Okay. You say that like I'm going to hurt, like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I don't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Emotionally, you mean? Anyway, I'll share my phone with you now. All right. Uh, all right. I'm gonna check this real quick, just in case anything's changed. No, nothing's changed. The lady who knew everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders Earth. Uh, the lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who was around every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky, a victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with a little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all I've turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as far, gentle as forever, a dry quill and expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no one at gaze. The lady who knows everything now knows I, what I am thinking. Though I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I found every answer, all of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose. And we speak only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath she blows blows back, back me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. That's a lot longer than last time and I'm still not sure what to do about it. There's no like random load me thing or anything this time though. You know, it feels like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that is like meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of still on my mind so that's why I wrote about it. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Aha, are you surprised? I mean, if everyone was okay, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Two-dimensional 2D girls, gotcha. I gotcha there, Monica. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Is it actually going to be about writing this time? Are you ever too tired to share your writing because you're afraid it isn't that good? Yes. It can, be, it can be disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. Yes. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Yes. Because instead of just telling, telling you what your writing is good or okay or bad, They'll, they'll want to focus on more on everything that went into it and and things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it'll make you want to continue improving. It sounds like you're having your own literature club, don't you think? In a way, I guess. That's my advice for today. It was actually about literature this time. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Then why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri is immune to it. Uh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that everyone, something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Suri isn't here. Ah. It seems you're right. <sighs> Sari always, always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? Yeah, she's like the positive one. It's almost like everyone bounces thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just wanted to pee. No, she told me she was going home sick while she's taking it. 
Now, Suki, please show me some de- Now, Suki, please show some decency. No need to talk about pee here. Oh, come on. Ah, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all times to go home with her? You pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you to being all lovey-dovey. Ah, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding from misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of being avoiding me today, so I don't want to force her. Who? A curious expression coming to, from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out what the rest of the festival... Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will do during this weekend. What did she say, woman? I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Next week we'll be making cupcakes. We might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sorry, will be helping me design them. As for Yuri, dot dot dot. Yuri, you can, uh, um, uh, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. N no, that's not at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Dot dot dot. Nan, so who's pouting too? Jeez, can, even I can t can't t Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But it can't be. But it can't be. Uh, yeah. But if I can also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at the desk in focus and not nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Mike. The uh, one who is truly useless. Ahaha, <laughs> don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It'd probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help one help me out as well. We'd be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... As Monica's suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members. How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, I suppose I wouldn't mind their help. But, well, even if you don't mind how to bake, there's always some dirty work I'd give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice and you, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. If Suki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Suki, you mentioned you'd like to handle the baking on your own. Mike may not be able to, might like to be around if you make him do the um, nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds like more like you're just making excuse for Mike to. What are you saying? It'll be most extreme. It'll be extremely meticulous work, and baking isn't. So what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's to Mike to send how he'll like to and contribute. I'm not gonna save. Uh, I'm hoping I can get to these saves though. Also, I just realized I've been rambling here for an hour. Yeah, I'm gonna stop here for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will pick up in the next episode, which will probably be deciding who I go down to the weekend with. And I will see you guys in the next one, everyone. Peace out.